Before we go any further, um, I didn't realise the prize the prize we gave away for um, the logo was worth 500 quid. What was it, Dunk? It was a licence for any uh, JetBrains tool. So like your, your IDEs, your, uh, your photo tools. That's pretty cool, isn't it? 500 quid. It's not cash, but yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So, we're that generous. We thought we'd give away some more prizes, didn't we? Yeah. Feels like a quiz show now, doesn't it? <laughs> Go on then, Dunk. Do you want to do, do this bit, mate? Okay. Right, so the other prize we've got is a Ghost Lab licence, a year's Ghost Lab licence. So Ghost Lab allows you to do cross-device testing, uh, cross-browser testing uh, through one uh, UI. So you can fire it up and you can you, any interactions you do on Chrome can happen on Firefox, can happen on IE, can happen on your Android, can happen on your iOS. So you type in once. That, that action is replicated across all those other devices. So rather than having to pick up one device and then do that, pick up the other device and do that, you can do it all together. So I'm thinking, if Gordon's up for it, we're going to give this prize away to the best question that gets asked as part of this discussion. That's always the nicest and easiest question, by the way. <laughs> so to clarify, is that best like, question? Why is well, such a brilliant company? <laughs> <laughs> so whatever Gordon determines was the best question, oh, okay. I'm putting it all on you, Gordon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, which way is this going? Uh, I'll come to me for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, well done, Vinny, for winning that. That prize worth 500 quid. Um, so, we come to the second part. It's the sponsor plus a bit of a talk with no slides. However, you lied. I saw slides. I can see slides there. So now you've gone from ultra cool to just cool. You're just moving, don't go on fire. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to welcome our sponsor. He's already called out that he's paid for the beer and pizza. He's paid for more than that. He's actually paid for the venue as well. So without sponsors, we don't have an event. The sponsorship covers a certain amount of the money. We always end up going over budget and me and the two guys at the back, Chris and Dunk, we put the rest in, but we couldn't afford to pay 500 quid for an event, We'd, our wives would divorce us, so um, <laughs> without the sponsorship money, we wouldn't be sat here tonight. So I would like to welcome, on stage, Gordon from Sea Pine! Okay, okay. thank you very much. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, there's me. Oh, yeah. um, so thank you very much. My name is Gordon Alexander, and I come from cpine.com. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any slides, and I'm a little bit worried about that now, um, partly because I mean, I've just actually come from the Labour conference, believe it or not. Which is a bit of a, so I spent the last week there, which is lovely Liverpool. And I don't even remember um, a couple of years ago, Ed Miliband did this uh, no auto cue, no note speech. Maybe this is a bit political geekery. Um, and he forgot to mention anything about the economy. Is that ringing any bells? <laughs> and some of our opponents, for some reason, criticised him for that. So anyway, but anyway, I'm, so I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried about my nose, my nose, my, my nose slides, like, but I have got, no, I have got some notes. Um, okay, so I will give you a little bit about about CPI software. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're basically a medium-sized software vendor. And you have to pretend to listen to this because we're sponsoring it, by the way, so you have to, have to listen. So, um, so, we, so we're basically a medium-sized software vendor, and we make a product called Test Track. And Test Track basically is, um, I would describe it as an, an ALM solution or an application lifecycle management solution, or in old money, uh, as a software development lifecycle solution. So we're talking about requirements management integrated with your test management, um, integrated with your defect management, integrated with your um, your agile scrum management or whatever process you happen to use. So, it? so the idea is that with that tool, it improves the efficiency with which you manage your product development process. So that's basically what it is. And I realized one of the things, one of the problems I realized about, about not having any slides, that means I couldn't put our, um, our, uh, our website up or my, 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 um, my email address. I'm going to rectify that now. So basically, um, so we are, we are, so we are cpine.com. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for anybody who wants to contact me, so I am alexanderg at cpine.com. So all you Facebook, I've heard of this Facebook <laughs> thing. Yeah. So, so who said I don't have slides, basically? So, so yeah, so anything you want to talk about, 
um, afterwards, then Alexander G. Gordon Alexander at cpine.com. Right, okay, so that's probably enough about, oh yes, another marketing thing. Um, in September the 23rd, we test magazine um, voted us one of the leading test tool providers. So I've got to get to tell. How exciting is that? We're fantastic, very good. Uh, okay, so um, what I'm proposing to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, the conflict or the barriers between agile, or between adopting agile, and a rigorous testing process. Maybe what, or a rigorous quality assurance process, maybe one that you is mandated by the standard you follow, and basically explore: is there a conflict between that? And that, you know, bit of a spoiler alert. I think there probably is. So we're going to talk a little. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, uh, maybe for ten minutes or so, um, and then uh, then we can maybe have a discussion about what we think about about that topic. So I've got a few questions for you guys. So my first question is, and this is a show of hands. So who would say um, that they, in their organization, have fully implemented an agile development process or product development process across their entire process, entire department? Okay, so that's like two and a half. Two is not quite sure, so two and a half, okay. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's, that's three. So who, who would say they're partially or considering agile? Yeah, so I mean, so, so what, I, should, I should, I guess, introduce what I do. So I mean, I'm part of the professional services team and I go out and I talk to people about how rubbish their process is and the fact that their only solution is to buy our product, basically. So, you know, that's how I got to know Neil, uh, sorry, Lee. Lee. Lee and I, for a while, he was using, he was using our product. So I, I, and I talk to a lot of people and basically everybody is in that position. Everybody's kind of using Agile, but then everybody, everybody says the same thing, well, we're, we're kind of feeling our way. And I think as testers, I think if you look at, if you look at Agile, maybe Scrum, there's been a lot of thinking around Agile and Scrum, and I think, I think Agile's fantastic, but you know, testing is always, still now, it's still a little bit of a, an add-on, I think. So I, don't, I still don't think we've really figured out how to have, do Agile with a rigorous testing process. So we'll talk about that for 10 minutes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, oh, another couple of questions, sorry. Um, um, and this is really a shout out thing. So I don't know, if, does anyone, this is really about standards and regulations. And um, so does anyone, does anyone have to follow or does follow any standard? I think that maybe if you work at the automotive, so just shout out the standards you've got, you've got to meet. Okay, so standards. Any others? Accounting standards. Okay, accounting standards. Yeah. Any kind of development standards you have to adhere to? Technical requirements. Like Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's quite good. Thank you for that. Um, and the other one, how we're going round is um, so obviously we've only got three people who think they've fully implemented agile. So the big question is, um, and, so, and everyone else is trying. So I guess maybe if we can capture a few, I mean, what is the major challenge or barrier that's stopping you adopting Agile? Anyone want to have a People in charge. People in charge? <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Culture. Pe people in charge. Culture. And that is culture. Culture, yeah. Time scales. Sorry? Time scales. Time scales, yeah. Good one. Legacy systems. Legacy systems, I mean, you, you mean like reg legacy processes or legacy systems you have to maintain? Like programs that we use that are old. Okay, and you can't, okay, okay, legacy, legacy systems, yeah. And people who've worked it like 20 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so old people basically, I mean, what are old people doing in software development? It's ridiculous, yeah, old people. Yeah, and you know, I mean, personally, I don't understand why we've stopped using COBOL, but never mind. People don't even know what COBOL is. That's terrible. Yeah. Uh, Test environment model. Test environment model. Mm -hmm. Okay. An old-fashioned way of doing testing on just doesn't really support. Okay. Our very good. Old-fashioned testing model. That's very interesting. Thank changing you for that. Process time. Okay. No time to change process. Okay. I like that. Multiple All right. vendor models. Multiple vendor models. Yeah. Okay. Multi-site as well. Multi-site, okay, yeah. 
That's good. No training. No training. Okay. All right. That's brilliant. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk more about that in, uh, in five or ten minutes after I finish twittering on. Um, okay. So basically, I'm just going to tell you what you know. A few points I'm going to make. So I'm going to have a look at the stand. Uh, what um, I've picked out a standard, which is like this, uh, there's a standard in functional safety. I'm going to look at. I'm going to analyze that to try and figure out um, basically, basically what this what this talk is about is. Do standards or rigorous testing um, present a barrier to agile adoption? Uh, and I think the answer is is yes. I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at one of the standards. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read a couple of them. So that would be very interesting. Um, and then I'm going to try and boil down for me what that implications those standards have for what you need to do in terms of testing, and also what maybe you need to do in terms of rigorous testing. So you know things like traceability, for example, and then. I'm going to look at my view, for what it's worth, on what the key relevant Agile insights are, and then look at the conflicts, because I think there are conflicts, so I'm going to look at that, um, and then I'm going to look at what, what the real barriers are, and you know, just to be fair, I have to say my, in, our interest in that is obviously that we believe that our solution is, is our, our product, is basically the reason we developed that, our product, primarily is to deal with things like making it easier to adopt Agile. So the reason I'm talking about this tonight is really because we think our solution is. So the solution is our, is our product. Don't want to be too marketing about it, but that's kind of why I'm talking about it. So let's kick off. So, um, so I'm going to read out a couple of standards. So this one, uh, I know you thought it was going to be good. Now. So this is IEC 61508 part 3, section 6.23. You know what I'm talking about, yeah? Um, so actually, this is this is a, this is the, like the parent standard in functional safety. You know, so if you're working in a highly regulated environment, um, things like the automotive, if you're making automotive so software, that's a child of this. You know, the, the FDA medical device regulations, they're all kind of child of this. I mean, and the other thing to say is that I am not in any way an expert in any of this stuff. So, um, so I'm just going to read it out. So, so this is paragraph. Paragraph A, and it says, apply administrative and technical controls throughout the software safety cycle in order to man manage software changes and thus ensure the specified requirements continue to be satisfied. And that basically, is, to me, that means um, you've got to test. You've got to test all your requirements, and you've got to, when you change things, you have to, you have to make sure you manage that change and continue to, um, to test the changes. That's basically what that says, um, in my mind. Um, so, paragraph. So, paragraph B says, guarantee that all necessary operations have been carried out to demonstrate that the required software systematic capability has been achieved. Let's kind of test it. But there's also got implications about traceability. So, basically, so if you're supposed to prove that um, the systematic capability of the software has been has been uh, done, and to my mind, you need to look at your requirement specification, and that's why you produce a traceability matrix to all your tests. That's why you record your test results, because you, uh, you have to prove that. And then similarly, um, there's also a standard here, which is talking about maintaining accurately and with unique, unique identifications, configuration items, which are uh, requirements, software specs, design documents, software source, test plans and results. Again, that's really about traceability. So, so I would my interpretation of boiling down standards and the reason why we do regu regulatory testing is basically to three things. One is that if, you, if you're required to do a rigorous quality assurance process, then you need to enforce documentation. You need to have a requirement spec or design specs, and you need to sign them off. You need to have record keeping. So basically, if you change them, you need to record that. So that's number one, enforce documentation and record keeping. Number two is traceability. So who does traceability or tries to do traceability in terms of tracing your requirements to your test cases? Anyone do that? Yeah, we do that a lot. And a lot of the, and a lot of the standards require you to do that. Um, so show traceability. Um, and the third thing is really to demonstrate control of your process and demonstrate that when you have changed. Because traceability is pretty easy until you start, or well, it's pretty difficult, but it's, it's even more difficult when you start throwing in change. 
So basically, but most of the standards really talk about how you have to control change. You have to make sure all changes are approved, and you have to make sure that you correctly assess the impact of the changes, and you retest anything that's changed, basically. And that's, that's when it all starts to get pretty hard. And also, we'll see later, you know, in an agile environment, it gets even harder. So, so that's, that's the three fundamentals, I think, of standards or a strong regulated test environment. Um, in terms of what Agile says to me, I think basically, I mean, there's lots of things I love about Agile, but I'm going to make three points about Agile that I think are relevant to this. The first one is simply, I would say, um, uh, is that you can't do all your design work up front. That was one of the key Agile insights. Like in the old days, um, we used to try really hard, write specs, and then del deliver the software, and it'd be wrong. Um, and then what the Agile Insight was quite clever. It basically realized that actually that's impossible. So that's where we got all the iterative development from. And what they realized was that you need to embrace change through iterative development and, that, and embrace the early feedback. So basically, embracing change is the key to successful Agile adoption. And the third thing I think that's important in Agile adoption is self-organizing teams. So that's the three things I think Agile deliver. And to me, that's a, to me, that's a big conflict. You know, so you're basically talking about, um, you know, you've got to enforce documentation and record keeping, but you're trying to embrace change where the, specif the requirement specification is supposed to, the user story is supposed to change all the time. So how can you mean, you know, so, so the, you know, so I think there's three main challenges, three main sources of conflict from if you, want, if you have a requirement for a rigorous and strong testing process and you're trying to adopt Agile, I think there's three main challenges. Firstly, can you feasibly maintain your documentation, your record keeping, if they're changing all the time? Secondly, can you maintain your traceability metric? So lots of people said they did traceability. Um, who always keeps it up to date? Yeah, one, one person, you know. So, yeah, that's the reality of it. We all think it's a good idea, but we find it pretty hard to, t hard, hard to maintain. And then, and that really, if that's an aspiration to have traceability, or if it's a, a requirement, because the standard requires you to do it, and you can't actually, you know, if you're making a medical device, you can't not do that, you know. So if you're adding in all this extra change and trying to uh, adopt, uh, adopt, uh, adopt Agile is a significant problem. So maintaining traceability is my second barrier. And my third barrier is can you feasibly, with all this change going on, still demonstrate you've got control of your process and control of the changes? You know, are you doing an impact analysis? Are you, do you really know which tests need to change? Have you really run the tests you need to? And that's incredible. It's difficult at the best of times. But, but in order to adopt Agile, you have to you know, you have to you know, multiply it by a factor how much change you're actually going to do. So, um, so basically, my answer to that is, um, is basically no, you, you, you can't do these three things if you continue to use the existing tools. So if you're using Word to write your requirement specification, then I don't think, I mean, that's pretty hard to do your traceability matrix to manage change because, you know, that's one document, because basically, that's one document. So I'm basically saying you can't, I don't think you can feasibly do, manage the amount of change you need to adopt Agile using Word or Excel. I don't think you can do it using standalone Scrum tools because in order to do things like you know, traceability, do your, do your change management from your higher level planning, your requirements management, all the way down through your testing, I don't think you can feasibly do that with a standalone Agile tool, however good it is. Um, and then do your requirements management in, in a requirements management tool or in, or in a Word document. I think you've got to, you know, so that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the second thing. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, I, so, I, so, be, and, and I don't think, I mean, I love physical task boards, you know, for your agile stuff. I mean, does anyone use physical task boards for your Scrum stuff? Moving, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many terrific things about them. You know, it's just the physicality of it. You're standing at a board, you can see it, and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, unfortunately, especially, if, you know, they just, they've got such technological limitations that they're not practical if you've got, if you require a, rig, rig, a rigorous quality assurance process 
I don't think they just cut it. You know? so, um, so the answer is no. Um, uh, and you know, this is a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a biased answer, but you know, the answer is, of course, yes, if you use test track. Um, you know, as you would expect. And, 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 and to be fair, you know, it, it, there, there are other tools out there. They're all obviously rubbish. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, the reason I'm talking about this is because you know, we see this as the way, as the, way the, the industry is going. You know, we, and we, come in, we come from quite a strong quality assurance background. Um, and, and we've we're also been um, you know, developing our agile, uh, uh, you know, the way our, our tool supports agile. And we see this as a big gap. You know, there is a real, there is these barriers there. Um, and so the reason, we are, the reason I'm here talking about this is, and the reason our tool supports this is because we see this as a big problem that the industry probably hasn't really focused on. So, you know, so forgive me for pushing our tool a little bit. bit. So I'm going to basically see, finish by saying there's kind of three things that I think a tool needs to do, which our tool does, of course. Um, is I think, you know, there's no getting away from, I think, in the early parts of your process, having specifications, having documents, because at the end of the day, the subject matter experts, the business people, the marketing people need to read a document, depending on your organization. So I think it's hard to get away from that. Um, but what you need to do is, you need to have a specification that isn't made up like a Word document of one big thing. It needs to be a document that's made of individual requirements, like a, using a proper requirements management tool, if you've ever used that. Um, it needs to also, crucially, you need to integrate your high-level planning processes, your, maybe your product management, your road mapping. That needs to be properly integrated with your Scrum delivery. Because if you're, if, you're, if you're reacting to change, but you've got to make sure you've tested all your requirements, you can't have your Scrum delivery in one tool and your, your, your requirements management in another tool. That's the second thing. And then the third thing, in order to embrace change, you do need a tool to help you out to do things like automate, you know, show me the impact analysis. So if, I, if, if I'm working away, you know, I'm, a, I'm developing this, reading my user story, and I realize, oh, actually, you know what? This whole epic, this whole requirement is actually not going to work, you know? Then you need a very quick way of understanding all the links, you know, where all the tests relate to that requirement. Where, so, so you basically need a tool to automate that. So, um, so... What I'm basically saying is, um, if you work in a rigorous testing environment, this, this is my opinion, hopefully you, you may have a different opinion, if you, if, you, if, you have a, if you have a requirement for a rigorous testing process, if, you've, if you have to meet standards um, that mandate this sort of thing, um, then that does represent a barrier to agile adoption because the extra change that, that you need to do in order to adopt agile does um, cause a major burden, um, and I don't know what the solution is, but obviously our solution is to, is, I, I really can't see any other way, you know, I think our solution is to have a tool which helps you deal with that extra change. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's me.